The Architect of Destruction by Maureen Scott. Obama comes from a community organizer background where it's us against them. But that's not who we are. And that's not the position the leader of our nation should take. Dr. Benjamin Carson. Obama appears to be a tormented man who is filled with resentment anger and disdain for anyone of an opinion or view other than his. He acts in the most hateful, spiteful, malevolent, vindictive ways in order to manipulate and maintain power and control over others. Perhaps because as a child he grew up around family members and mentors who instilled him with an abiding bitterness toward the United States. That bitterness seems not to have left him. It is not the color of his skin that is a problem for anyone in America. Rather, it is the blackness that fills his soul and the hollowness in his heart where there should be abiding pride and love for this country. Think, have we ever heard Obama speak lovingly of the United States or its people with deep appreciation and genuine respect, genuine respect for our history, our customs, our sufferings, and our blessings? Has he ever revealed that, like most patriotic Americans, he gets goosebumps when a band plays the Star Spangled Banner, or sheds a tear when he hears a beautiful rendition of America the Beautiful? Does his heart burst with, pr- with pride when millions of American flags wave on a national holiday? Or is he moved to sadness and reflection when someone plays taps on a trump- trumpet? Has he ever felt the depth of our admiration of the military as lovers of those who keep America free feel when soldiers march by? It is doubtful because Obama did not grow up sharing our experiences or our values. He did not sit at the knee of a grandfather or uncle who showed his medals and told of the bravery of his fellow troops as they fought and tramped through foreign lands sacrificing for a cause greater than in their own lives. He didn't have grandparents who told stories of suffering and then coming to America penniless and the opportunities they had for building a business and life for their their children. Away from this country as a young child, Obama didn't delight in being part of America and its greatness. He wasn't singing our patriotic songs in kindergarten or standing on the roadside for a holiday parade and eating a hot dog, or lighting sparklers around a campfire on July 4th as fireworks exploded overhead, or placing flags in the gravesites of fallen and beloved American heroes. Rather, Obama was separated from all of these experiences. He doesn't really understand us and what it means to be an American. He is void of the basic emotions that the most feel, uh, that most feel regarding this country and is insensitive to the instinctive pride we have in our national heritage. His opinions were formed by those who either envied us or wanted him to devalue the United States and the traditions and patriotism that unite us. Obama has never given a speech that is filled with calm, reassuring, complimentary, heartfelt statements about all the people in the United States, or one that inspires us to be better grateful and proud that in a short time our country became a leader and a protector of so many. Quite the contrary, his speeches always degenerate into mocking, ridiculing tirades as he faults our achievements along with uh, any of his critics all for the sake of a laugh or to bolster his ego. He uses his office to threaten and create fear while demeaning and degrading anyone who opposes his policies and actions. Unlike a secure leader who has noble self-esteem and not false confidence, Obama displays a cocky, haughty attitude and a dread of being critiqued. Mostly his time seems to be spent causing dissension, unrest and anxiety among the people rather than uniting us, even though he was presented to us as the great uniter. 
He creates chaos for the sake of keeping citizens separated, envious, aggrieved, and ready to argue. Under his leadership, Americans have been kept on edge, rather than a state of comfort and security. He incites people to be aggressive toward, disrespectful of, and retaliate against those of differing backgrounds and views. Through such behavior, Obama has lowered the standards for self-control and mature restraint to the level of rowdy street-fighting gangs. When instead he should be raising the bar for people to strive toward becoming more considerate, tolerant, self-disciplined, self-sustaining, and self-assured. Not a day goes by that he is not attempting to defy our laws, remove our rights, and override established procedures, install controversial appointees, enact divisive mandates, and assert a dictatorial form of power. Never has there been a leader of this great land who use such tactics to harm and hurt the people in this country. Never, we, never have we had a president who spoke with a caustic evil tongue against the citizenry rather than present himself as a soothing, calming, and trustworthy force. Never in this country have we experienced how much stress one man can cause a nation of people on a daily basis. Obama has promoted the degeneration of peace civility, and quality of cooperation between us. He thrives on tearing us down rather than building us up. He is the architect of the decline of America and the epitome of a demagogue.